right, so we're going to look at motion in a straight line this time. So that means that our particle is going to be moving like straight across, in which case it's going to be only moving in the I component. It might also be moving like straight up and straight down again, in which case it might only be moving in the J component, but it also could be a straight line that looks a little more like this, in which case it's going to be moving in the I and in the J components. But in any case, they're all straight lines. All right, let's just do a couple of worked examples. So here's the setup, no question yet. Particles motion described by R with respect to T, 3T minus T cubed I. All right, so this is its displacement vector, and you can see it's only moving in the I component. It's only moving straight across. Might be moving that way, might be moving back that way, might go that way and turn around, something like that. Where T is greater than zero. Okay, time is only positive in this particular question. Negative time doesn't make any sense in this question. You can have negative time, but just not in this one. Okay, so I might ask you velocity, acceleration. I might ask you for its speed. I might ask you for... Uh, how far did it travel in a certain amount of time? Um, at a certain time, how far is it from the origin or something like that? All right, so what sort of questions are we going to do? Well, let's do a bunch of them. So just a quick warm-up, initial position. So position at time zero. That's easy. We just put zero in to our uh, displacement vector function. All right, so we get something like this, zero i or just zero that means it's zero centimeters from the origin, which of course is just a really stupid way of saying it's at the origin. All right, what are we gonna do next? So how about the initial velocity? How fast is it traveling at time zero? Well, to do that, we're gonna to have to find the derivative of r with respect to t. So r dot t, that's equal to our velocity function, which is gonna be equal to uh, bracket three uh, minus three t squared. Now that's the velocity function. Now we're going to want to find the initial velocity at time zero. So V zero equals three minus three times zero squared I. Um, and that's going to be uh, three I. Now that means that it's moving at three I, uh, let's say centimeters per second. Now those units, both centimeters and seconds, would be given in the question somewhere. I've been a bit lazy with my expression of my question. All right, so this is moving in the I plane here, okay? So it's moving straight across like this at a speed of three centimeters per second at time zero. Now, I just said the word speed, but I'm also talking about velocity, and you know they're related, but you also know they're not the same. But in this case, they are the same because it's moving in the I direction at three centimeters per second, because it's not moving in the I and the J components, this is the magnitude of the velocity, which means that it's also the speed. So next step, let's find speed at T equals two. Now I can put the two into here because of what I just mentioned, but instead I'm gonna create like a speed function just in case we end up looking at one that's moving in a diagonal. So a formula like this keeps me out of trouble. Speed at time equals two is equal to the magnitude of uh, vector at time two. All right, so let's just sub two into our velocity function, see how we go. So when I do that, I get this here and this here and this here, which is the magnitude of negative nine i. Now speed can't be negative. You're either speeding forward or speeding backwards, but in any case, your speed is positive. It's the magnitude of your velocity. So our final speed is just nine centimeters per second. So be careful with speed there. You can drive your car forward, you can drive your car backwards, but in any case, your speed is measured as a positive or as an absolute value. All right, this is the first real challenging one. Where and when is velocity zero? All right, so uh, let's look at this. We wanna know where and when. So when is T and where is its displacement? Okay, velocity zero. So we have a velocity function. There's our velocity function. Let's let our velocity function equal zero. All right, so we have zero equals three minus three T squared bracket I. Now we don't need that I in there, so we can just rewrite this without our I and then rearrange to solve for t. Now, if you're careful about that, you're gonna end up at plus or minus root one, and root one is just one. But then, importantly, you're gonna say, wait a minute, the question said where t is greater than or equal to zero, so we can reject negative one, 
uh, because uh, t is greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, t is equal to one. And that solves the when, but it doesn't solve the where. So we can now sub t equals one into our where, which is our uh, position vector function. A little bit like this. And then we just do some maths. There you go, uh, 2i. So what can we finally say here? We can say at t equals one, um, particle at 2i, and it's a velocity is zero. All right, and that about wraps up what I want to do with that question. Let's run through a whole different example. So in the last example, we were moving straight across. This time, a ball is thrown straight up. We're going to be moving straight up, turning around and moving straight down again. Uh, now, the ball is thrown from an initial height of five meters, and its initial velocity is 15 meters per second and we are on Earth. Now that we are on Earth bit is really important because gravity on Earth is approximately 9.8 meters per second per second. That means it doesn't matter whether you throw a ball into the air or a truck into the air or a cat into the air, it's going to immediately start accelerating back down again at a speed of, or at an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. All right, so what sort of questions am I going to ask you with this initial set? Something like this, uh, find the acceleration function. Now, does it matter whether you're throwing a ball, truck, or cat into the air? The answer to this question is always going to be the same, negative g j. That means that it's accelerating by negative 9.8 in the j. It's accelerating it downward, that's where the negative come from. 9.8, because we're on Earth, if we're on Mars, it'd be something different and j because that's our up and down component. Okay, you can probably guess what I'm going to ask you next. What's the velocity function? So we just need to uh, anti-differentiate this. Now, negative g, don't forget that's negative 9.8, and the antiderivative of a number is just the number multiplied by t, and we have j here. But when you anti-differentiate, there's always this plus c on the end. Now, uh, what is the plus c in this case? Well, we're looking at a velocity function, and our initial velocity was 15. All right, so I can replace this with 15. But not just 15, 15 in the j component. All right, and finally, I can uh, push these two together. Now that we've got our acceleration, now that we've got our velocity, you absolutely have to know what I'm going to ask here. Yep, displacement function. So. We're just going to anti-differentiate this. So again, we have negative g. Uh, we're going to have to square that t and then divide by that t. Uh, plus 15t. All, right, all of that's in the j component, but we also are anti-differentiating, so there must be a plus c on the end. And what's that plus c going to be? Well. Our initial height was 5 meters, and that's what our plus c is going to be. So we have our plus 5 here. Now, I've just gone with the stylistic choice here of a negative a half instead of divide by 2. Much neater. And now I'm just going to smush all this together because we've got all of this j, all of that j. And this is our displacement function. Now, always remember, g is a number. It's 9.8, which means that this bit here is 4 or negative 4.9, approximately. Okay, so don't get confused here. G is a number. Um, all right, so what could I ask now that I have an acceleration function, a velocity function, and a displacement function? Well, why don't we find this thing's maximum height? All right, so how can we find its maximum height? Well, maximum height is going to occur uh, when velocity is equal to zero. Now, I've talked about this before, but that means that the object's going up, 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 and then it stops for a split second, and then it starts coming back down again, that means that at that point, when it turns around and starts coming back down again, its velocity, it's not going up, it's not going down, its velocity is equal to zero. So here is the velocity function, which I've pulled from here, and I'm going to let it equal zero, because that's what we want to do. All right, so we don't need that little j on the end, so let's get rid of that. And then let's just rearrange and solve for t. So negative 15 equals negative gt. g is a number, so now we get negative 15 divided by negative g, which is just going to be 15 over g, and that's going to be our time t. Now that's about 1.53 seconds if I put 9.8 in there, 
but I'm just going to hold the G steady because I'm not finished yet. That's the time when we're at our max height, but it's not our max height. To find out the height, we're going to have to sub 15 over G in for T into our displacement function here. All right, so what I've done is taken my displacement function, moved it up to here, and subbed in our time, 15 over G, into it. Now, I'm just continuing to work through here, kind of regret it. I could have probably just shoved this whole thing into my calculator, uh, approximating G is 9.8 at this point, but I'm moving through it, making all of the fractions over 2G, and let's just see where we end up. Now, I end up here, it's a bit of a waste of time because I've still got two Gs in there, I'm going to put that into my calculator. I'm going to get 16.48. It's important that we understand that that bit's approximate because gravity is not 9.8. It's just close to it. Okay, so what was that again? The maximum height. The maximum height of this thing is 16.48 meters from the ground. Now, not from its initial height, from the ground. So this is where I'm going to close it out, but there's so much more you can do here, but you just need to interpret the question and then decide what you need to do. So for instance, they might say, um, how long until this thing hits the ground? Well, you just need to find out when it hits the ground by letting the displacement equal zero and then finding the time at which that occurs. Uh, they might ask you, what is the velocity when it hits the ground? And in that case, you would have to Sub zero in, find out when it hits the ground, sub that time into the velocity function, and that'll tell you how fast it's able to hit the ground. But you just need to interpret the question and then say, how can my equations help me get to where I need to go?